Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Kent for Thursday, April 29th, 2021. It's NFL Draft Day. Are you kidding me? We're brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Draft Day, any day. A great day to go see Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist that there is. My dentist lasts 27 years. I don't know a lot, but I know how to pick a great dentist. Dr. Mike O'Neill is mine. He can be yours, too. All you have to do is call. 317-849-2933. You know what to do. Hit subscribe. Hit like if you've already hit subscribe. Ring the bell. Do all that stuff. Let's talk about sports. The NFL draft is tonight. Before we talk about the Colts, let's talk about how historic this might be as a draft for quarterbacks. There's never been, at least back to 1999, there has not been an NFL draft with more than five quarterbacks taken in the first round. And there has never been a draft where five quarterbacks were taken in the top eight picks. That could happen tonight. The other draft where five were taken way early was 1999. Five were taken in the top 12. Here were those five. This is not a glorious night for at least three of these teams. Uh, Quarterbacks were taken one, two, and three in 1999. And that might happen tonight. Here they were. Tim Couch went to the Browns. Yikes. Good for Tim Couch. Not so good for the Browns. Uh, You had Donovan McNabb taken second. Good for the Eagles. He led them to a Super Bowl. Uh, Achilles uh, or Achilles Smith. Not so good for the Bengals. Dante Culpepper. Pretty good for the... uh, Where the hell did he go? He go to the Vikings? I think so. And then Cade McNown. I'm not sure where he went other than out of the league pretty damn quickly. Not to be confused with, like, the McCown guy. There are, like, 78 quarterbacks in NFL history with some kind of permutation of the name Cade McNown. (laughs) So it's tough to keep those guys straight. And you're not to be blamed for that, and I'm not either. Tonight, you've got Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, uh, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones. Three of those, Trevor Lawrence is going to be taken number one. Uh, Zach Wilson of BYU likely to be taken number two by the Jets. And then you've got kind of a land rush for number three. We don't know who is going to be drafted at three. And then at four, you got the Falcons. I don't think the Falcons are going to take a quarterback, but they might. Also in the top ten, you got the Panthers, although now they've got Darnold. You've also got the Broncos. You, you've got a lot of guys, a lot of teams, and they all might covet one of these quarterbacks. Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones. Mac Jones, kind of the low ceiling, high floor guy. You know what you're getting. He's going to be able to play as a rookie. Trey Lance is a guy who might be more developmental, a little bit like Patrick Mahomes. And then Justin Fields is a guy, some feel belongs in the top five, some think will fall into the top 15 someplace, but all five of these guys are likely to be taken in the top 15. How many are going to make it? You look back at drafts historically, First round picks in the draft. How about last year, right? Joe Burrow, you got Herbert, you got Tua, and you've got Love. Those four might wind up being really good NFL quarterbacks. Usually, you don't have more than three. In 2019, you had three. You had Kyler Murray, you had Jones, you had Haskins. Uh, Kyler Murray's been pretty damn good for the Cardinals. In 18, you had five. You had Baker Mayfield, Darnold, Allen, Rosen. Uh. Lamar Jackson, there are four guys, Lamar Jackson at 32, four who are really pretty good. So it's not unprecedented to have four out of the five be something and and, uh, ascend to starting level quarterbacks. But even number one picks, and you've had a bunch over the years, whether it was uh, Burrow, Mayfield, you've had Goff, Goff, not with his original team. He was taken by the Rams. Now he's with the Lions. Carson Wentz, number two in that trade, now with the Colts, was with the Eagles. So, And that was just, that was five years ago. And those two guys, drafted one and two to be franchise quarterbacks, have moved on to their second teams. So it's not perfect. Andrew Luck in 12 was a franchise-level quarterback. Cam Newton in 11, uh, pretty good. Sam Bradford in 10. Everybody thought he was a hit in 2010. Not so much. He didn't have the temperament to be a leader. I saw him for two years up close with the St. Louis Rams. When you watched in practice, you couldn't tell who the quarterback was. You ought to be able to tell who the quarterback is. 
when you watch practice. Uh, you, you've had other guys like Russell back in 2007, not good. Matt Stafford in 2009, pretty good. Um, Alex Smith in 2005, pretty good. Eli Manning, Carson Palmer, David Carr, ugh. Michael Vick was terrific talent-wise. So you, you've had, to, how about in, uh, in, in 1999, you had the first three guys, like I said, they were all quarterbacks. And then at four, the Indianapolis Colts took Edger and James. Who was the Hall of Famer? Edger and James was the Hall of Famer. That's how good Bill Pullian was back in 1999. All right, what are the Colts going to do in the draft tonight? They're going to trade down from 21 to 26 with the Cleveland Browns. They're going to get 89 or 91 with it. I don't know which. And then they're going to take 89 or 91 along with 54, package those, and move up to 39, 40, 41, somewhere in that neighborhood. And with those picks at 26 and then in the late 30s, early 40s, they're going to get their starting left tackle and edge rusher. That is what they are going to do. Um, there you go. So it is said, so it is written, so it will be. Uh, one month ago yesterday, Mike Woodson was hired as Indiana's basketball coach. It seems like more than a month ago, doesn't it? it seems like a long time we've been talking about Mike Woodson as the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers. The gains other than Woodson for uh, Archie Miller, which is to me a huge upgrade, You've gotten Xavier Johnson from Pitt, Miller Cop from Northwestern, and Tamar Bates from uh, high school. He is a high school senior down at the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. He's going to come to Indiana. He decommitted or, or got his release from the University of Texas when Shaka, Smith, or Shaka Smart left for, uh, for Marquette. And so you've got Tamar Bates. He picked up those three. You have lost Armand Franklin. Joey Brunk and Al Durham. So make your own conclusions about the talent level at Indiana. Has it progressed? Has it moved forward? I think it has. You're going to miss Armand Franklin. You're not going to miss Joey so much because he didn't play a minute last year. And then Al Durham cycled through. He played his four years. He's gone. He's going to finish up at Providence with his COVID year. That's fine. I No hard feelings. Uh, Al Durham. Al Durham was a fine Hoosier for four years, and that's all we have a right to expect from anybody. Uh, the NCAA Board of Directors yesterday approved the one-time transfer rule where athletes are, of all sports are going to be able to transfer one time without having to sit out. They get immediate eligibility. This, if you have used the one-time transfer, you cannot be an immediately eligible grad transfer. That's your one bullet. That's it. If you transfer after that, all those previously thought to be kind of punitive rules are still in effect. So um, there you go. It, it has been the case that you've been able to do that in a lot of sports, just not in baseball, ice hockey, um, you, then men's and women's basketball as well as football. The, oddly, the sports where you can make money. Uh, have not been covered by that one-time immediate eligibility transfer rule. What are the problems with this rule? And there are problems with this rule. Make no mistake, this is not a perfect rule. This, this is not the NCAA making things cleaner for college basketball. That's not what happened as this thing was approved. This will tempt players to transfer. I don't think that transferring is a great option. I, I, I don't, here are the problems though. It gives people an out. You, you are able to, without consequence, run from adversity. I don't think that's a positive. You interrupt your education. I don't think that that's a positive. You break from friends. Embracing disloyalty, that's a problem. And it gives parents power. That's a problem too. They've got kind of a, uh, an option. They've got Sunday coach. Well, then uh, my boy's going to go play for somebody else. That's not a good place for parents to be where it comes to communication with coaches. It's not going to be a net positive for college basketball fans. All right? That's life. You, you don't hold these people hostage at their current university because it's good for them. 
you try to communicate and have them embrace the fact that it's good for them and have them choose to stay at their school. There's no reason to shackle them there. So the NCAA has decided not to. This NCAA rules are not about coaches' convenience or fans. It ought to be about the student-athlete experience. And if kids want to bounce, they should be able to bounce. That should be it. Now, one time, I'm good with that. Uh, I don't want kids changing teams. I don't want everybody to go like Justin Sarasoli on college basketball. He went from like Ole Miss to Seton Hall to Loyola. I don't know where he wound up. I don't know if he finished at Loyola, but he was everywhere. I don't want kids to do that. College students pledge a school, go to the school. But if there are problems, serious problems, they ought to be able to bounce without penalty. I got no problem with that. And the NCAA, like I said, shouldn't enact rules to protect collegiate athletes from themselves. That's not what they should do. Uh, should the Pacers tank? They got a game tonight against the Brooklyn Nets. Pacers not very good. They're 29 and 32. They don't have to tank. They're going to lose. All right? You've got Miles Turner, who's out. Domas Sabonis has been out for a while. Uh, Lamb has been out for a while. You got a lot. TJ Warren's been out all season. You got a lot of guys out. Goga Batanz is out. So they don't have the talent to win. They don't have to tank. I don't think you should ever tank. I don't think that losing should become a strategy toward winning. I don't think that makes any sense. I think once you're a loser, you're a loser. I, I don't think you embrace losing as some kind of uh, operational standard in order to get winning. Now, if the Pacers fall out of the playoffs and they get a lottery pick and that lottery pick brings a seriously talented person into their team, I think that's a net positive. But you don't go into any game with the idea, hey, we're really going to crap this one up. We're going to lose here. And, and because we do that next year, we're going to be really good. I, I, we haven't seen that. Sam Henke tried that with the 76ers. Have they won a championship? They have not won a championship. It didn't work in Philadelphia. It's not going to work in Indiana. Let's let the Pacers be what the Pacers are. They're going to lose on their own because their talent, again, injured, and that's the way it goes. Let's celebrate some birthdays on this draft day. It's glorious. We're not going to have to. After today, we aren't going to have to talk about Jalen Phillips or Joseph Asai or Panay Sewell or Gregory Russo or any of these guys that we have spent an odd amount of time. I feel like I'm the biographer for these people. I'm looking at tape of these people playing in games I could care less about in order to try to figure out whether Quiddy Pay can get to the quarterback in the NFL. That's insanity. What are we doing? <laughs> You're doing the same thing. We're out of our minds. After today, we're just going to have to look at one of these guys because one of them is coming to the Colts. And then tomorrow, they're going to get one guy. And then on Saturday, there's going to be a lot of guys because Chris Ballard loves him picks. Uh, birthdays, Becky Moore, the great Jeff Lee celebrating a birthday, the great Tony Severino. We celebrate all Severino birthdays. Julie celebrating the Severino's birthdays. And any day you celebrate one Severino, you celebrate them all. Uh, sales manager at WTTS, by the way, doing a great job. Jim Streetelmeyer, also celebrating a birthday. If today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, you celebrate somebody else had his best done with an honest and specific compliment. Today, I'm talking about the NFL draft. One more time, talking about the NFL draft, what the Colts are going to do, who they're going to get. We'll talk about that later this afternoon. We'll also talk about the transfer rule because I think it's kind of important. And, and how we view this, I think it's kind of important for us as fans of college basketball. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the transfer rule. Can't wait to talk to you then.